everybody, I'm Cora, and today we're going to be talking about useful honorable mentions. I haven't made useful videos for quite a while, so today I wanted to talk about how to get an honorable mention by first time in the ethanol, and then by doing well in the useful. And of course we gotta address the elephant in the room, my hair. Well, I mean, okay, I go crazy on the haircuts, okay, but don't worry, it'll be back soon. And of course I'm not really dressed appropriately for this, wearing all my math merch and stuff, but still, we're going to talk about physics, and we're going to talk about it real good. So first thing I'm going to do first, you gotta pass FMA which is the first contest, which is 25 problems in 1 hour and 15 minutes, so it's a pretty fast contest. Physics is a quite an intimidating subject, so getting into useful is kind of hard. So if you want to get into it, you're going to have to put in a lot more work than just getting into math competition or something like that. But there is still a method to the math. So let us start with the first section of the contest, the F equals MA, which is a 25 question and a 1 hour and 15 minute contest, which is basically multiple choice and it basically tests you on kinematics. So for this contest, you don't need to worry about all that nonsense thermodynamics and relativity. Just focus on kinematics, energy, and momentum, and torque, and the basic AP Physics 1 stuff. So of course, if you want to take the test, you're going to have to learn some physics. And if you want to learn physics by yourself, there are a bunch of good textbooks out there. I personally recommend Giancoli. There's another one by Surway if you want to search them up. And honestly, just doing these textbooks is enough to get a basic understanding, but it's not exactly enough to pass the FMA. Now you just in case you were thinking about learning calc to help you with FMA, they're really not that related because the FMA just doesn't use that much calc. If you're going on a useful, then that's a completely different story and you have to have calc, so you're just focusing on FMA, you don't need calc at all. Now, I've personally looked for courses online because learning physics by myself, I was like struggling a lot, but really there's nothing good online. I tried Coursera, I tried Udemy, but I couldn't find anything super good. So basically your best bet is to get a teacher that's local, which is what I did, or to try to figure out how to get the solution manuals for your textbook and learn from the solutions of that. Now, of course, if you guys want me to make a crash course, just let me know down in the comments and I will do it. But for now, you gotta just kinda have to learn it on your own or find a teacher. So basically on EVMA, there are some things you gotta prioritize learning. Of course, there's a lot to learn and you gotta learn all of it if you wanna do super well, but you gotta learn vectors, 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 vectors. If you don't know vectors well, you're doomed. So first off, you need your conceptual understanding, right? You gotta know what vectors are, their, their magnitude and direction, and then you also need to know how to manipulate them. You have to know how to add them, subtract them, differentiate them into components, dot product, cross product, and all that good stuff. And once you know that, then you can move on. Do not, do not think that, oh, this is hard, I'm just gonna skip it and come back to it. Because no, everything depends on vectors. And you're not going to be able to solve a single problem on the FMA if you don't know vectors well. It'll also make it a ton easier to learn stuff later on. Learning the rest of the problems is basically just doing problems over and over and over again. But don't use the FMA problem because they are very limited. There's basically only been two per year for like since 2007 on their website. So you're not going to find that many problems out there. So the first step is to know your equation. And then just read the book. Just read the book. Make sure you keep track of all the equations. Take notes if you need to, but know your equation. Of course, if you do more problems, you're going to remember your equations better because then it'll force you to use them and then you'll know when to use them and all that good stuff. So that's why problems are super important. But if you can't just do problems, then make sure you memorize those equations. Because once you have them memorized, it's a lot easier to do all kinds of problems. So how exactly do I do problems? What problem? What problem do you want me to do? What do you want from me? And I say, you gotta do textbook problems, and you gotta start with the easy ones first. So basically my strategy was, do one level of one problem. If that's easy for you, which basically means that you have the conceptual understanding, then do a level two problem. If that one was easy for you, do the level three problem. And once you get a level 3, do all of them because level 3 is generally about the level of ESMA, slightly easier, but it'll give you a lot of good practice. So just do all the level 3 problems, there's not that many of them. And most textbooks have like level 1, level 2, level 3 problems. So make sure you know what textbook you're using and what type of problems it has, and then do that strategy. And let me reiterate, do not use ESMA problems until you finish all of the textbook problems and you're super, super comfortable with everything that's AP Physics 1 related. That basically means you know how to do vectors, you know how to do projectile motion, you know how to do torque, you know how to do conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. Dude, I don't even have enough hands for this. But yeah, that's not how you learn the concept. So now you have a concept, but now you actually have to apply them to a content. And when you're doing that, you have to actually be really fast because that one's actually a pretty fast contest. Even though it has the same number of questions as AMG 10 in about the same amount of time, it's a lot faster, much, much faster because Physics problems have a lot more steps, so you're going to have to practice your speed a ton. So whenever you're actually using the practice exam that they have on their website, you should be doing it time, because you want to practice your speed before the actual competition. 
you just gotta finish the first 10 palms in the first 20 minutes because then you have time to actually try the harder ones and you need at least a 15 pass. So finishing the first 10 palms really quickly is extremely important. Another way to speed up your game is to do a bunch of speed exercises and when you do a palm, don't be satisfied with getting it right. Be satisfied with doing getting it right and doing it the fastest way possible. So in physics, there's a lot of formulas, right? Like V0 T plus 1 half AT squared equals the delta X. And there's a lot of intermediate equations too. You might have the big five down, but there's a bunch of intermediate equations you've got to know. For example, the height that a ball travels, if you draw it straight up with velocity V0, is 2 V0 over D. And you can easily derive that from the big five, but you don't want to waste time doing that during the FMA. So know all your intermediate formulas. If you find a problem and it gives you a formula that you didn't know before, memorize that. But not all the problems are super straightforward, right? You have to, some of them, it doesn't strike you immediately what to do, and that'll slow you down a ton. But once you decide which problem you want to work on, and, you want, and you're not sure about how to solve any of the problems, then what you should do is you just stick to one problem and draw out the diagram. Draw it extremely well, and draw out all the forces. Because if you have a good free body diagram, you could probably write a ton of equations, and eventually one of those equations is going to give you the right answer. This is basically the strategy I use when I don't know what to do, because just putting it all out there on a paper and being able to look at it, just makes it a lot easier for your brain to process. You don't have to worry about like thinking, oh, what was that I did again? Oh, yeah, you get the idea, right? So, yeah, write everything down on a paper once you think of it, if you're having a hard time. But if you're not having a hard time, just go through it. Go through it as fast as you can and don't worry about writing things down. So basically, you follow the strategy. First, go through the textbook, do all the level 1 problems, level 2 problems, level 3 problems, in that order. And once you've done that, then practice your speed. And once you practice your speed, you should be completely fine to pass the FMO. But next, we gotta talk about the use of flow. And that, my friends, is a proof based contest. It's a video with six problems in three hours. Fun. So much. Three hours of physics. Who can ask for more? Unfortunately, use flow covers a lot more topics. Hooray! More physics! So you gotta learn all the AP Physics 2 stuff as well. That's electricity and magnetism, thermodynamics, relativity, and there's a lot more. But look at your textbook first. So the thing about USPO is that there's six problems and there's a lot of recognition, right? You can either get an honorable mention, you get a bronze medal, silver medal, gold medal, or make camp. And getting an honorable mention is actually not that hard. You really don't have to know any AP Physics 2 to get it because usually the contests have at least one or two mechanics problems. So if you're only going for an honorable mention, focus on honing in on your mechanic skills because basically what happened to me last time is I didn't really know AP Physics well, uh, 2 that well, but I knew kinematics really well. So I was able to get one of the kinematic problems and I got an honorable mention. But if you're going farther than that, you gotta know your AP Physics 2 real, really good. So to do that, you gotta go through your textbook, learn all the concepts, and even that's really not enough because these are the proof-based concepts. You're gonna have to apply those concepts heck up. And honestly, I really don't know the best way to do it. In my opinion, the best way to do it is to just do use of flow problems that are past use of flow problems, but those are extremely, extremely hard. They're like way harder than F flow problems, and I could barely do any of them. So I don't think they're great practice. Honestly, I think the best you could do is just do textbook problems. But once you get to use flow, you had to know calculus, right? So you had to use different textbooks. So a calculus textbook that does calculus based physics that I would recommend for you guys is Halliday and Resonance. And that basically has a bunch of calculus problems, and it's basically like the use of flow, except not as hard. So if you're not quite at that level, then do textbook problems from Halliday and Resnick, and you'll get into the right level in no time. If you're on a time crunch, what you could do is you could do past problems. If you're not able to solve it, look at the solution and see what kind of formulas they use. And once you see what formulas they use, you can go through the textbooks, look it up, and then work on that specific subject. So yeah, that's all I got to say about the use of flow honorable mention. Hopefully this got, helped you guys with your physics in general, and if you guys want me to do more of these kind of videos, let me know down in the comments. If you guys want a craft course, leave a like, and I'll be sure to make one for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks again, and see you guys next time!